use a console command in an Unreal project, it goes through this uconsole console command. So the way it does this, the player controller uses its console command function to then pass this to the player object that it has. Once it has that, it goes through and iterates over every one of the commands. I didn't actually know this until writing this video, but you can send console commands with a pipe separator to activate multiple commands in sequence. Um, according to this line here. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna try it before I send this video up, so I'll tell you if it actually works. Uh, just assume that if I've told, if I said this in the video, it works, and then calls the actual function itself. So inside of the U player, there's an exec function, and this is where things get slightly different. In order to run the console command, it checks several actors if they have a certain U function implemented with that name. You can define a console command on any object, any U function that you want to set up. You can even do it in Blueprint. If it isn't in the places that it's checking, it won't actually find the function that you need. Even though it's visible in your auto-populated console command, it won't actually find the, uh, the console command that you need it to activate. So the uplayer exec function actually tries to route that console command to several different actors. Um, I'll quickly go through the list here, but if you want to see the code yourself, it's uplayer exec uh, line 94 player.cpp um, as of version 5.2. First, it tries to execute it on the world. Then it tries to execute it on the player controller's player input. And then it tries to execute it on the player controller itself. Then the pawn that it's got possessed, if it has any. Then it tries to execute it on the HUD. Then it tries to execute it on the game mode, cheat manager, then the game state, and then the player camera manager. So if any one of these uh, handle the command and return true, it will stop any of the others in that list from actually executing that console command. So you may find yourself having a situation where you have two console commands with the exact same name and one of them's only executing. It's because it's doing it in this order. You should also try and avoid having console commands that have the exact same name, just in general, <laughs> like, but yeah, th this is this is why there's a, there's a there's an order of execution. It's only ever going to check these actors to run console commands. A lot of them are doing the exact same thing. They're calling this function call functions by name with arguments. What this is doing is it's looking up in the actual class itself if there is any U function defined with the exact modifier that matches the same name, and if there are, it tries to send the command directly to that. So, for example, on the player controller here it has an exec function defined called local travel. If I was to type in the command local travel, it will check all of those actors that I mentioned in sequence. And the first one that responds that it's actually been handled will be the one that's activated. If I wanted to create a console command very quickly for a character, which is something that I would possess as a controller, uh, I would just create a U function. So in the U function definition, I would put exec, which flags it as a console command. Uh, which does a few things in the background. It adds it to the uh, console command list. If I call this something like demo command, and then I just do a simple implementation. So if I say uh, every time I run that console command, it just puts in the log demo command activated. So now our character, we just defined a new console command for it. So that means if we press play, and I just bring up the output log, if I press the console command button and type demo command, you will see it's now auto populated in the console command list. If I press enter, that will activate that command. And you see here how it's output in the log as we expect. So now you can actually do the exact same thing in Blueprint very easily because the character we know is a pawn that's been possessed. And as we just went through that flow of how it figures out what command to use, it will find commands on the character, the pawn in this case. So if we open this up, so let's just quickly create a new function. In this case, we're gonna just call it hello command. Now, if I press on the function itself and you go into properties, you drop down this advanced and you tick exec. This will be the exact same as typing u function exec as we did in native code. So now in blueprint and in native, we can add console commands. So in this case, we'll just put a log out. So log string, it's just going to say the word hello. Save and compile. Press play. Now, if we type the word hello command, you'll see it's now output in the log, hello. So that's how you add console commands in both Blueprint and Native. Remember, it's gonna take one of those classes that we went through in that path. So it will go through the controller, it will go through the player, it will go through the pawn, 
it will go through the input, the HUD, uh, the world. If it's not in one of those places, it won't find the command. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say, for example, I have this demo asset here. This is just an actor, doesn't do anything. It's just a simple actor. So let's just create a function. Let's call this broken command. So now we can flag this, this function as exec, just like we did with the player character. So let's just print this is broken if, uh, if this console command actually runs. Open up the output log, and then we'll just add broken command and we'll just run it. So it's gonna say the command is not recognized. There is a way around this, of course. One of the classes that we mentioned could forward the event to an actor that we've defined. On the player character itself, instead of defining all of our console commands here, so if we wanted to define it in one of our actor components, we could go create a new actor component, for example. Let's just call this demo. Now this demo actor component, we're gonna put a u function, exec, demo actor component command. We'll just give it a basic implementation, just do a ue log, hello from actor component. Now, if I save and recompile, so let's very quickly just add this component to the character. All right, so now we've added this demo component to our player and it has a console command attached to it. If you try and run that console command, it won't activate. The command system knows that this command exists, it just doesn't know how to route it to that specific uh, instance of a class that we needed to activate it. If we wanted to have that character route the console command directly to that component, what we would do is in our character itself, we would override the function process console exec. And this doesn't have to be complicated. We're just gonna create a quick definition here. What we're gonna do is now check to see if the demo actor component that we just created is valid. And then we're gonna call demo actor component process console exec on that, pass in the same arguments, and then return true if it passes. That's all we have to do. So now the character knows how to route to that actor component which defined that function that we just set up. And this could be the same with Blueprint as well. If, if we had any um, Blueprint nodes, uh, if, if that actor component had any Blueprint exec functions on it, it would have the same problem trying to route it unless it knew how to do so. So by doing this, we now allow that one actor component to also respond to console commands. So now, if I just bring up the output log, quickly clear it, run that console command that we just mentioned earlier, it now says hello from actor component. This is because the console command has been routed through your character to that actor component. Now, that's not to say that's the only way to define console commands. There, there are a couple of other ways. So I'm gonna show you how to define a console variable. This can be useful for, let's say, runtime debugging of something. So let's just create a quick console command here. Uh, command output character. I, I wanna be able to change the output of this depending on a CVAR that I set. So a CVAR is just a console variable. It's really easy to define a console variable. It's just in your CPP class, use the class T auto console variable, uh, and then you pass in the variable type that you'd like. Most of the time it's gonna be an int32 because you wanna just pass in zero or one or whatever number you want. Um, and the naming convention is just CVAR. You don't have to call it this, but I recommend using it. Uh, and then we'll just call this CVAR command output, just because we want that as an example. This takes in a couple of parameters. The first one is the actual name of this uh, console variable we wanna use it. When you're defining console commands or variables, in general, you wanna prepend it with the project name just so it's easy to find later. In this case, I'm just gonna call it demo.command output. So this is gonna be the command variable's name. So when I type in demo.command output, I can put space and then uh, any number that I want afterwards. And then it's going to ask us what the default value is gonna be. So in this case, I want the default variable to be zero. It's gonna ask me to then provide some help text. So when it's listing out the console commands, it can kind of add some additional helper text to tell you what the thing's about to do. Um, in this case, I'll just say print this number to console when you type command output character. So the next parameter is a callback. You don't have to define this, um, this is just really useful if you want to do something immediately upon that variable being changed. In this case, I'm not gonna do that because we don't need to. Anyway, so now we have this uh, console command variable. Uh, now if we go to the console command that we had, the command output character, 
and we're just going to output that value. So UE log, log temp, log text. You do cvar command output dot get value on game thread because we're running this on the game thread. And now that will output the value, whatever we've set in that console command variable every time we run that console command. In the past, I've used those console command variables to basically turn on and off gameplay features just so I could see the delta between the two without having to rebuild the game every time. I set the variable to zero and then I see the feature without and then I set the variable to one and I see the feature with. Just makes iteration a little bit faster. Sometimes very useful for debug as well. Um, you can turn on and off different debug uh, rendering capabilities. You, you may want to show like a, a capsule or something if, you, if you're in a certain debug mode that you've got that console command variable set to. Now I go to demo.command output. You can now see the help text on the right side where it says print this number to console when you type command output character. That's the text that we defined. Makes it easy for people to know what that console command actually does. And now if I set this to, let's say, 12. Now if I type command output character in our console log, you can see the value was set to 12. Again, I can just change this to anything I want at any time and it'll update that variable. I use this kind of thing a lot for debugging. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to ship things with everything enabled by console commands because you could get some weird things happening. This is how you use console command variables and then you also can set console commands themselves and, and route them to whatever actor components you want. I hope that helped. Um, it's been something that I use a lot, so hopefully you can use it too. Anyway, have fun, bye.